Like many people during COVID lockdown, I took on a little hobby project to brighten up those those grim days. And um, in this project, I designed a fabric using an archive of botanical illustrations. And to help me design, I coded a, a generative design tool which randomly selected images from that archive and then configured the pattern by you know varying the number of images, um, the sizes, the positioning, all that sort of thing. And um, the archive that I used was the uh, USDA's, uh, the, that is the US Department of Agriculture's Pomological Watercolor Collection. Now you might be wondering why, why do they have such a collection? Well, the, in, in the past, uh, botanical illustrations and watercolors were used to help understand the natural world. Um, we used to study what was going on in agriculture and could help farmers and could help um, uh, could help output, as it were. So, uh, what they did was they commissioned people to go out into the world, they commissioned artists to go out in the world and capture all sorts of different fruit and nut varieties. And this took place between about 1886 and 1940 and they have over 7,000 watercolors in their archive. Now, it's a lot of images and there are even more combinations. So it took me quite a while before I ended up deciding on a pattern that I liked and ultimately um, wanted to have printed. So once I did have one, I, I did get it printed by a, a, a fabric printing service and they sent it on to a tailor I found online who did a really good job. Now, I really enjoyed this project and I've decided to revive it for uh, for creating with data. So in the next two videos, what we're going to do is uh, create this, uh, recreate the revamped version of this uh, generative shirt designer, which I'd like to call uh, Fruit of the Elbrew. Now, in this first video, what we're going to do is uh, go through the data scraping, the data preparation steps. Um, and the very first thing we're gonna do is have a good look at that archive and how the markup works so that we can then extract all the information that we need for it in preparation for step two. And so in step two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look into how we can use um, all the, some of the best features of SVG and uh, D3JS to um, create uh, all kinds of variations and lovely different designs uh, using a kind of generative approach that is seen in uh, that's seen in, in in all sorts of different domains. Um, in particular, I've been inspired by uh, the way that generative design works in architecture, where all sorts of different combinations of, of rooms and layouts are displayed side by side and you can see them all together at the same time. So this is a little bit of a departure from um, the way that I first coded that generative design tool. Anyway, let's get started and have a look at our archive. The Pomological Watercolor Collection. And now if I go into Browse and choose an item here, we'll have a look at some peaches. One thing to note there are the rights. So the use of the images in this uh, watercolor collection are, are not, uh, is not restricted, but a statement of attribution is required. So I'll read it out. Please use the following attribution. US Department of Agriculture, Palmological Watercolor Collection, Rare and Special Collections, National Agricultural Library, Beltsville. Fantastic. Okay, so we have a really impressive collection and it is totally open for us to use. Uh, one thing uh, to notice about uh, the page here, or in particular in the URL, is that we have this ID, and it's the same ID that we can use to address the to address when we want to download the image, right? So if I go to uh, if I go to download image medium size, medium resolution, um, yeah, the href is just download image, standard image. Palm 5359 and high resolution, we have the same sort of thing. So um, just by using this ID, we can sort of structure our URL and request to get our uh, the different resolution sizes and whatnot. So that will um, definitely help us when we're writing our uh, scraper code. Um, one thing though is I am going to, for the most part, be using the thumbnail images because we don't need huge images for the for the generative design tool. Uh, another thing to take note of 
uh, are the various kind of filters we can use. So we can filter by, say, the common name of a, of a fruit. Um, so we can have a look at the avocados. And we can change the results per page. So in this case, um, there's about 100 avocados. So we almost get all of them on the one page. So the main thing to note is how altering the filters and sorts and whatnot on this form produce different URL params, right? So common name avocado per page, uh, search fields, etc. So if I go to page two, we have to set that in, in a request. So we're going to use that to our advantage when we're scraping later on. All right, I've shown you the collection. So now what we're going to do is get started and uh, write, get started writing our scraper and data preparation script. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize a new Node.js project using Yarn init. And I'll tell it a few things about uh, our, our project. So we've got Pong scraper, something like that version. Yep, yeah, that'll do uh, scrapes palm site. I am not going to fill this in properly. Um, entry point, I just, I'm just going to hit return and, and use the defaults for the moment. And so we're using the, the, the yarn package manager, which we're, it's going to help us install a couple of, of packages that we'll need. So once we've answered those questions, we get uh, basic package.json and that seems to work. So for this project, we're going to use uh, two libraries. One is node fetch, um, which um, just basically makes it easy to make web requests. And the second one we're going to do is add, uh, second one we're going to use is, is called Cheerio. And this library will help us um, parse the web pages that we get back. Um, and that's all we actually need for the moment. And I'm going to make a new file um, called fruit, uh, fruit.mgs. And in fruit.mgs, that's where we're going to, you know, we're going to put our code. Uh, now, if you've not come across the MGS extension before, um, MGS just tells Node that we're using the ES syntax for, for importing modules. Opening through MGS, I've added a bunch of things to get started. And the first thing you notice are three modules imported uh, using the, the import uh, keyword um, as I'm using the MGS extension. Uh, the first one you'll notice is FS, which is a node's inbuilt file system module. And then the other two are the ones that I added using, uh, using, using Yarn. Um, now we've got We've got two uh, functions here. Um, the first download image um, does what it says in the 10, right? It uh, gets, can, gets passed an, a URL and a file name. And all it does is it will write the output of the response of the URL to, uh, to file um, with of, of image name um, in the project directory that it's run. Now, the other one is extract thumbnail URLs, um, and it doesn't quite do that yet. And um, we're gonna have to build on what we have. So at the moment, all it does is it makes a request to URL, and when the response comes back, we save that string uh, in, in, in the form of, of this variable called body. So to actually parse through the results there, uh, we're going to have to use Cheerio, the Cheerio library. Now, now, what I'd like to do with this script is to actually just hit a results page, that search results page, and then for each um, thumbnail image in there, grab that thumbnail URL from the, from the image element um, using the source attribute, and then download each one of those um, to our file system so that then we can sort of build up uh, a copy of the images in the archive. Um, so for example, 
here's an example results URL, right? So we're going to pass that in to we're going to pass that into extract thumbnail URLs, and that will go off and it will return what should be a collection of sources, which we don't have yet, right? Our sources um, should be a bunch of image thumbnail image URLs, which should look like this. So if I hit download, if I go and if I run this now, download image, will go off to this URL, and it will save that as test.jpg. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use a uh, Cheerio to parse through the web page. And Cheerio looks a lot like using um, jQuery. If you're familiar with jQuery, it is uh, practically the same, right? It makes heavy use of sort of CSS selectors to, to gather up those elements, right? And starting off, all you have to do is um, load HTML using the kind of load function. So what you do is you give it uh, an HTML string and it returns a Cheerio object, which you know, kind of using that, uh, uh, using the dollar. And then you get um, this kind of jQuery style syntax uh, that you can use to traverse the DOM and select elements and get attributes and all sorts of great stuff like that. So back over here, uh, this is a research results page. Now, uh, if you look at an image element in here, you'll notice that it's situated in a couple of divs, but crucially, um, each one of the results is an article element. And there's the one image in, there's only one image in there, so that's handy. And that's situated inside um, rather helpfully well-organized structured HTML. We've got an ID for documents. So those are the results set. And we can use that. So using the query selector, ID documents, article image, then I get this node list. So this is where we're gonna go and grab our results set. Now we've already got a HTML string in the form of body. So we load that and we get our Cheerio object. And now that we've got a Cheerio object, we can um, grab the image elements um, using our uh, CSS selector. So we're inside documents, article image, that should give us all, uh, all the image elements. Elements. And now you've got that. Um, but we don't want a collection of image elements. We want a collection of those sources, right? So image elements, we can index it like that. Um, we would do something like, I think it's a tribs and source. So uh, we want an array of sources. We can easily achieve something like that using map. Um, so if we put something like image elements and then we map call map and pass in this function is going to return the source uh, attribute for each one of those elements and we save that to sources and voila we've got a collection of source URLs that look that should match this kind of pattern here great so at this point we can return a list of URLs to go off and download we need to tie these together with um, two bits of code so we need to, um, now I'm gonna comment those out and we're gonna write um, a loop for each loop that we'll go through and it's gonna grab, um, we're going to have a collection of sources that are going to look like uh, it's going to look a bit like this, and we want to turn it into um, it's going to we want to turn it into something like pomp or thumbnail.jpg. Um, so we want to pass those into our download, load these two, uh, the URL and the, this file name into into download image. So we're going to have to take off the slashes first. Um, 
So I would do something like this, right? We can write no slash. So, so we're going to take the source, split it off, and then join it. So this will end up being your uh, post name, dash download, dash palm, dash thumbnail. And so that gets us some of the way there. Um, that one will. So here's, here's a bit I've written earlier, right? So what we're going to do is that's what's going to end up looking like. And then we're just going to take away this part. I guess I could have done that before I did the slashes, but whatever. And then we are going to append.jpg on there. So we should get that should be our file name following that format. And we're going to call download image using our source and passing in our file name. Now, we don't want to hit the server um, one immediately after the other. It's not the nice thing to do um, when you're scraping. So I would add a sleep to let the server rest in between each request. All right. Okay, let's, I'm just gonna tidy this up. Bing into a, into its own little function. Um, now what we can do is try out, so we're gonna call download results um, on an example results URL. And that will go off, extract thumbnail URLs. And then for each of those, we're gonna do some printing, um, download that image, take a pause in between and tell us if anything goes wrong. Let's try it. So to run, all we need to do is call node fruit. Uh, I think I forgot something. Um, hang on, let me switch back to code and add uh, the set timeout. The way I want to use it is just a simple delay. So the syntax is a little bit different. I don't need to actually give it a callback. All right, let's try this time. Uh, so I want to switch back here and this time Okay, so now it's telling me it's downloading. Um, I think it's working. Let's have a look at the folder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see some images being added. Magnificent. Okay, we've got our first set of results. Now, although the new website is uh, vastly improved and allows us to do all sorts of filtering, it doesn't really allow exclusive filtering. So for example, if say I want to show all the, uh, return all the results set apart from apples and the diseased fruits, then that's not something I can do. Um, so that's why I've added a few augmentations to our script, which I'll go through in a moment. Um, another thing that we want to do with our script is to gather up some details of what we have downloaded, right? So we don't, at the moment, we have, because we've got it in the file name, we've got um, the ID of uh, the entry, which is really helpful. Um, but it would be nice to have, especially when it comes to doing our, uh, our front end and our visualization, it would be nice to have a JSON file describing all of the images that we have saved and pairing the image name with, let's say, the, the common name for the fruit it depicts. So the first thing I've done is to expand extract thumbnail URLs to do something slightly different. So uh, the first thing I've done is to, instead of gather up those image elements, I'm just collecting all of the article elements and I've create an empty array of, instead of sources, renamed it to fruits, right? So what we do at the end of, um, 
extract thumbnails is we return fruits. So to check for apples, right? For example, we want to filter out apples. I'm just going to hard code this in here. Probably this could be um, a parameter in, in here, but what we're going to do is we're going to load the markup into the Cheerio object called dollar a and we are going to find the text that is in that dd blacklight common name class element right so this refers to to if i go through here in the result set it refers to this element here so now I have um, the, just the text. The text is just peaches, and I think there's some there's some white space, but we trim that out. So we've got that common name saved in fruit, and the image is now selected um, just by calling it, uh, just by using um, the element name in the article, and we do a simple if else condition to push that to the collection of fruits. So by doing so, um, we skip when we find apples and then we collect up an object here, an array of objects. We're gonna collect up an array of objects with the source image and the fruit name. This means our download results function is a little bit different too, right? So instead of getting a, an array of, of source URLs, uh, we actually get an array of objects called fruits and we iterate through them, um, doing the same kind of thing again, set, uh, um, and then calling download image. But there's one other difference here is that we are collecting up a, another array of um, objects for the fruits that we've saved. So if we successfully saved it to our file system, then we push that to this array of objects called saved. The other thing that we didn't really deal with in our previous uh, iteration of our script is we didn't think about pages. Um, so the pagination is, is fairly simple. Um, we just have to manipulate the URLs that we are hitting in order to download or extract those thumbnail URLs and, and parse through them and get those objects back. And once we've gone through all those pages, downloaded all those results, and we've got collected up this list of everything that we've saved, and we write that. Um, now that's just a, an array of objects, as we're saying. Um, so this write saved function simply turns that object into a JSON string and saves it to savefruits.json. So we're really, uh, really ready for the next step when it comes to using D3, because this will help us tell our data visualization what, where to go off and get images and what images that we actually have. Now let's take a look at this running uh, this script and see how it goes in action. So, and call our script. Oh, so lots of apples on page one. And now it's going off and downloading lots more. Um, let's take a look at folders, see how it's getting on. And we can see those images coming in. Okay, it's finished downloading. So now we've got our save fruits file, which I can open and here we go. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got the source, the fruit and the file name saved in here. We now have our own uh, collection of fruit images that we can use for the pattern designer. Now, one thing I discovered when I started using these images is that the black borders start to bother me. So if you look at the uh, the list of images here, um, you'll see that there's a border that kind of tends to vary 
in width and height. But when uh, when you look at the uh, the thumbnail images, these tend not to go over a size of ten pixels wide for uh, for the actual for the thumbnails themselves. So to deal with this, I turn to Image Magic, which is a free open source um, command line tool that you can use for cropping, resizing images. Um, and that's what we're going to do to uh, remove those borders on our result set. So to do so, um, we're going to use uh, Image Magic. You, you give it an input JPEG and using for the you know for the following command um, and then using what is called chop you can basically crop out part of the image now for this you've got to tell it it's got like gravity north east west south sort of thing going on so it's like i want to crop 10 from the top the west the east and the south so you know you give it input.jpg and then you tell it what you want to call it cropped, right? Now we've got loads of images, so we're going to use a little bit of bash scripting to iterate through each one and crop it, maintaining the mean, um, crop it and save the output, maintaining that quite important ID in the file name. Um, so to do so, I'm going to make a directory called cropped um, so we don't get confused here. And I'm going to paste in the command that iterates through each of those uh, JPEGs. And so now in the cropped folder, we have the uh, our cropped versions, which I can show to you. And there we go. I mean, that's pretty subtle. I don't think you can probably see it so well. You can see this one actually has a little bit poking out, but more or less for all of them, it has kind of worked. And this one's got a little frayed edge as it were, but some of these little inconsistencies are quite nice to display. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that's been helpful. Keep subscribed or look out for the next one as we're going to put on our fashion hat and switch into front end code mode uh, using D3JS to create this generative shirt designer.